Processor consists of two major assemblies, a heated body and a rotor. Rotor enters the feet above the heated sun and is evenly distributed over the units in a surface by the rotor. The rotor vertical orientation used for most applications. The virtual configuration provides reliable, efficient processing of vicious and fluid fluids. Units are available with either an external or internal bottom bearing. The vapor counter current flow used for most Vertical application, since it must must both heat and must transfer efficiency, and accommodates internal vapor or liquid entrainment separation. The vapor co current flow is the best choice for application where there is heavy vapor reading forming or flashing. Number letter components are discharged at the outlet, continuous washing by the bore with minimized fooling at the thermal wall where product or residue is concentrated most. Hi everyone, I'm Lee Guan Hong. I'm going to present the process of our equipment, agitated term firm evaporator. I will show how this equipment works and how it flows. This is our equipment, term firm evaporator. This is part of the evaporator, draft motor, vapor nozzle, feed nozzle, heating jacket, bottom con, and last discharge nozzle. And, and our, pod, our equipment has some sub part which contains condenser, vacuum connection, distillate connection tank, and concentrate collection tank. Okay, now inside the chamber, there are some parts which are entrainment, separator, and fit ring. First, we, our mixture and component will fit into the fit ring, and the component will fall down and it's evenly distributed over the inner surface. During falling down, the stream and the in and the con hot condenser will flow out. The component will be stirred and rotated with high turbulent flow by the rotor blade. And the heat wall will create optimal heat flux to evaporate the mixture. So the heavy concentrate or low volatile component will drop to concentrate collection tank and the high volatile component will become vapor, process, vapor phase and rise upward and flow to the condenser. The condenser will condense the vapor and it will drop to the distilled collection tank. So, this is how our equipment team, team, team firm evaporation work. Okay, thank you. So, next is the basic equation involved. So, as you can see, the equipment is utilizing the evaporation to reduce the water content inside the solution sample and to make it concentrated. So, first you have an evaporator by allowing your solution sample to be the feed and you're allowing the passing through of the saturated steams at the higher temperature. The steam will giving out its heat energy to evaporate water content inside the solution sample and produce a concentrated solution sample with a lower water content. So, in this process, it involves with two equations. First is the mass balance equations, and then the second one is the energy balance equations. So, for the mass balance equations, as you can see in the diagram, the feed goes into the evaporator, and produce a pure solvent or a water vapor and a concentrated liquid which, which is the desired products. So by assuming that the accumulation is equal to zero and what goes in equal to what goes out from the evaporator, the feed flow rate or called as mass flow rate must be equal to the flow rate of the water vapor plus the flow rate of the concentrated liquids which indicates a mass balance equation.
for the energy balance equations, energy in must be energy must be equal to the energy out by assuming that no heat loss to the surrounding. So by referring to the diagram, as you can see the energy inlet it consists of two uh, components which is the feed energy and the saturated steam. For the feed energy, simply multiply its flow rate with the its specific enthalpy under specific temperature and temperature uh, and pressure, you're able to gain the feed energy for the saturated steam. You simply multiply multiply heat transfer coefficients, which is U, and the heat transfer area with its inlet temperature. You're able to gain the saturated steam energy, and combining feed and the saturated steam energy become the energy at the inlet. For the outlet energy, as you can ref see in the diagram, it consists of three components. The first one is the vapor energy, the second one is the liquid or, me or concentrated liquid energy, and another one is the condensate, which is the cooled down steam. So for vapor energy, the calculation method is similar to the feed energy by simply multiplying the flow rate, the exiting flow rate of the vapor, water vapor, times with the specific enthalpy under the specific conditions. For the liquid, it's still the same. Simply multiply its flow rate with its specific enthalpy. You're able to gain the, li the liquid energy. For the condensate, you multiply U and A, the area, with the evaporator temperature which is also called as acid temperature. So by combining vapor energy, liquid energy and condensate, you able to gain energy at the outlet. As mentioned earlier, energy in equal to energy out. So for the flow and feed energy and the saturated steam energy must at the inlet side must be equal to the vapor energy plus the liquid energy and the condensate. So that is all the basic equation involved. Operation tips to improve energy efficiency. The following list provides evaporating practices that can reduce energy consumption in your evaporators. First, optimize the venting rate of non condensable gases to reduce steam waste while maintaining appropriate evaporation vessel pressure. Non-condensable gases in the evaporation vessel increase pressure which increases the boiling point and heat requirements. Second, maintain the optimum pressure profile as provided in the evaporator's design. Excess pressure inhibits evaporation by rising the boiling point. Third, condensed steam can be used to preheat feed product or used in the next effect of a multiple effect system. It can also be fed back to the boiler to offset the use of cold makeup water. Lastly, pre concentration of the feed will be reduced the energy required to operate an evaporator. For some applications, pre concentration with separation membrane can save up, up to 90% of energy consumption.